Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, my name is Ms. Nunez, and I am a computer science teacher working primarily with middle school students this year. So we'll be tackling the CS Discoveries curriculum on code.org. Right now, we are looking at the unit on the Circuit Playground Express and creating apps with devices. So we are picking up with Lesson 7, which is actually kind of interesting. It's a, a mini project. So we're going to start, of course, where we always start, which is this purple button over here on the right that says Lesson Resources. So when you click on that, it'll open up and we'll see everything that we need to work on to make this app possible. Um, so it says create an app that uses the Circuit Playground to collect data for a specific purpose, then has an app to analyze the data that was collected. So we have our project guide field collector app and we have our rubric field collector app. So let's open up the project guide, see what we have in store. All right, so let me enlarge this, here we go. Okay, so it says uh, overview, having a small sturdy physical device to carry around in your pocket can help people gather data in tough places and report the results back to the central computer. This is a common in construction sites, ecological and geographical surveys, or even surveys people in your community to answer a question. For example, an animal preservation group may need to collect data on how many endangered animals are in an area so they can use an app to go into the field and collect data, then return and analyze the data to make a recommendation. We're going to create an app that simulates this experience. Your app will let you collect data with the circuit playground using the buttons or toggle switch. When the data is finished, you can use the app to view the results and display certain information to the user. Your program should also use if statements to change the result based on the data that was collected. Program description. Brainstorm the type of data you would like to collect and what you can do with the results. You may not be able to actually take the circuit playground out into the world, but you can think of this app as a prototype for a future app that you could develop later. So at least in my classes this year, uh, we do have the Circuit Playground Express. Uh, we have one for each student, um, which is amazing, <clears throat> but we don't have the battery packs. So they have to remain plugged into the computer in order to use them. So there is no going out and you know collecting data. But I do love this idea of if you could, how would you do it? And we still have close to 30 students in the class. Um, and so that's, a, you know, a, a lot of data you can still collect using your device. So there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, so the first step is to write a three to four sentence description of your app, the data it collects, and how it displays the results to the user. And this is where you get to brainstorm and you get to go crazy with ideas. Um, honestly, this is a tiny box. If I were you and if I were in your shoes, um, what I would do is I would get a blank piece of paper and just doodle all over it. I would come up with ideas. I would, you know, create uh, examples and then I would scratch out the ones that don't work and try again with a new idea. Um, and so there's a lot you can do with this. Uh, I was actually working on this project just because I have a rule in my classroom. And that rule is that I will never ask a student to do something that I will not do myself. Um, and I tell the students that. And so every time we start a project, I'm right there with them. Uh, and while I do have access to the teacher manual, I do my best not to look at it because I want to go through the process of trying to figure stuff out just like you have to do. So what I wanted to do with this was uh, my, my app was going to collect data from the students that I taught. And it was going to ask them how many... Uh, CTE courses do they take, or, or not CTE, how many STEM courses do they take each year? And so looking at this year, because I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students this year, I was going to collect data and ask the students across my classes, how many STEM classes are you in? And that would include math, that would include science, so that's a given. Um, that would also include anything like um, computer classes, uh, even culinary classes, because in what, what people don't realize, culinary classes are STEM because you're having to deal with measurements. You're having to deal with uh, problem solving. You're having to deal with recipes. And there's a lot of STEM in the culinary arts. Um, and so things like that. Also, you know, STEM is almost an antiquated thing. Uh, in reality, one of the terms that a lot of people look at now is STEAM. So then you can 
give yourself the option of also including the art classes. So are they taking a ceramics class? Are they taking a photography class? Are they taking uh, a painting class? Like, and while my school doesn't offer all those, I'm just like saying, well, here are some suggestions and ideas. Um, so uh, that was the app that I wanted to make. I wanted to make an app that would ask the students how many STEM courses they take each year. And I was really excited to see what the data would be with this. Uh, so then I would sketch my app and of course the first screen and, and I would have multiple screens with this, but my first screen would be along the lines of, you know, welcome. Um, how many STEM classes do you take? And it would give an option or it would give, it would give a description of what is a STEM class and whether that was on the first screen or maybe a secondary screen, what is a STEM class? And then I listed all of the STEM classes that I could think of. Um, and then I would ask them, you know, if here are all the classes that I can think of in the school that I teach at, how many of them are you currently involved with? And then it would have the students using the buttons to uh, track with like counting. So right, you would click the right button until you got your number. You would click the left button if you got one over too many. And then you would either press the enter button on the app or you could even use the toggle button to say, okay, I'm done. Here are my results. And it would enter in the number. And then the results screen would actually show, and maybe it would say like the typical uh, HMS student takes three STEM classes a year, or the typical student takes 10 classes a year, which is silly, but you get the point. Um, and I might even have like a little message like, you know, we only get so many classes it seems, or wow, we're doing a really good job in introducing STEM to our students, something like that, right? Um, and so that's how I would sketch out my app. I probably have multiple screens. So did it, did it, did it, did it, probably three or four to make, to make it understandable. Um, and then I move on to my variables. Well, what am I tracking? I'm tracking how many courses are you taking? And so I, um, I'm trying to think, would I have one variable, more variables? Um, I'd probably have, yeah, I'd probably just have the one variable and it would say, what is it keeping track of? Number of STEM classes. And then, I mean, I could, I could make it even more exciting. I could say that, uh, they would also answer what grade are they in? Because then we could track which grade is getting the most access to STEM classes. Um, and then, you know, down here with our inputs, like I said before, left button would be, uh, take away one class, right button would be add one class. Um, and then maybe the third button would be toggle. I'm done. Um, and then data scenarios. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but my point is, is that I would fill this in. I would brainstorm all of my ideas. And then after that, I would jump into my coding. Um, and let me see, I, I, I think I actually did start working on it. Let me see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. All right. <laughs> Let's see what I got. Okay. Yeah. So. Here is uh, what I was working on. Um, and so screen one, STEM at HMS. What is a STEM class? Your science class, your math class, your intro to programming, applied technology, computer apps, video production, graphic design, family and consumer science. And the list could definitely go on. So click the left button if you only take one STEM class at HMS, which really nobody would click because everybody takes a science and a math. Um, and then click the right button if you take more than one STEM class at HMS. And then, uh, so this was very much a prototype and a rough draft. Um, and then I would have it go to different, uh, screens. So only one CTE course at a time is the norm, which of course is not true, but again, it, prototype, a prototype. Remember we talked about this before. A prototype is an example. It is a rough draft. It is nowhere near your final draft. Um, and so, yeah, so you can see over here on board event, so button L, one class, one class plus one. Uh, so actually I would have two variables. Either my variable would be one class or my variable would be more classes. So I, I would really want to go back and change these. 
um, and set it up like I was describing before, where you know you you click to you click to the number of classes you're taking, and then you would press enter, um, and you know so change. So yeah, so there we go. And basically, that was my idea. Do I want you to, to repeat my idea? Absolutely not. Do I want you to come up with a new idea that would be really awesome and amazing? Absolutely. That's the whole point to this. It's, that's why it's a mini project because everybody gets to pick something they are interested and then whatever you pick, you get to run with. I'm interested in STEM because of course I teach STEM. Um, and so, you know, this is to guide you towards what you're trying to make happen. Um, and then your, so data scenario. So data scenario at the end, like let's say, um, can I, can I edit this? Let's see. Make a copy. There we go. Make a, make a copy. All right. Um, so yeah, so we already talked about all this, but data scenario, a lot of, a lot of my students looked at this and went, what? Um, but so it's like, uh, three or less. So, uh, the typical, uh, student at my middle school is in three or less PTE classes, or no, not CT, STEM classes. All right, so four to six. The typical student at my middle school is in four to six STEM classes each year, right? Um, and I want to be very specific about that. So I, I want to say, you know, is this per semester, per year, each year, all right? Um, so seven or more. The typical student at my middle school is in seven or more classes each year. Now, what I could do even, I could even make it more fun with this. So instead, I mean, this is kind of like what happens, but what my text would read, our middle school really values STEM education. Right. I might, I might put that in there because if you're taking seven or more, holy smokes, we must be doing something right. Um, or we're not teaching reading and writing at all, <laughs> which is not the case, but you know, you see what I'm saying. Um, and so, yeah, instead of just putting a, a, a an objective statement, you can make it fun. You can make it goofy. You can make it something that might make the users laugh. Um, all right, so then after you've filled in this whole chart, then you're going to make your app. You're going to log into Code Studio, just like you saw, you know, with me and what I was working on. Um, and then you're going to test your app. So if you've got 30 kids in the classroom, then you can test it 29 times. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you do have an opportunity to test it, even if you don't have battery packs where you could take the circuit playground out into the world. And then reflect what part of your project are you most proud of, uh, why, and then if you had more time, what improvement would you make to your innovation? So like I said, like this was my first draft. This was my prototype. Clearly, I'm already seeing ways that I could make it better. And I would say that I would, you know, come in here and I would say, if I had more time, what would I do? I would go back and I would change the concept because, you know, one to only taking one STEM class at the school is not possible. Everybody takes a science. Everybody takes a math. So that wouldn't be possible. So our, I would know that I would have to go back and retweak it. All right. So the other thing that's really important, and you know, I didn't forget about it, is we got to look at the rubric. So let's open that up. All right. It says field collector app student rubric. Um, you know, I'm not going to focus on these categories because in my head, these categories should not matter at all. We should only be focusing on what we're actually trying to achieve. So for our project guide, the project guide is complete with each section described clearly. That is this thing right here. This thing should be complete. You should fill it in. You should be ready to turn it in so your teacher can see it. The final app contains most elements from the project guide. All right. So there we go. So inputs. Your in app uses at least two inputs from the circuit playground, which updates a variable within the code. All right, so inputs are buttons uh, that you can click, that you can press, that you can toggle, and anything that is sending information to your computer. All right, um, outputs. Your app uses at least three different outputs, either on the screen or the circuit playground. For example, changing the text of a screen element or playing the buzzer. All right, so again, uh, lots of different ways, but you have to have at least three outputs. Uh, whether that is sound, whether that is light, whether that is your screen changing, 
etc. <clears throat> and then your variables and if statements. Your app uses at least one well-named variable to keep track of information. Your app uses at least two if statements to display information to the user. That means that you have to have a point in your app twice, actually. So you have to have two points in your coding that says if this is pressed, if this happens, if this is clicked, if this occurs, then, and then you fill in the code of what you want to happen. So if uh, more, if students click, If students choose more than seven classes and press enter, then the screen will go to screen five that says our school has a lot of STEM engagement throughout the day, right? Um, if student chooses three or less classes, then app will change to screen seven which says our students get a small amount of interaction with STEM courses, something like that, right? So you wanna make sure you have at least two if statements and that you have at least one well-named variable, all right? Um, okay, so input, circuit playground inputs are buttons or the toggle switch. Your code may include onboard events to interact with the circuit playground inputs, I hope it does. And then output screen outputs can be any element that displays information to the user. Examples are labels, screens, images, or sounds. Your code may include set screen, set text, or set property to interact with screen output elements. All right, circuit playground outputs are the small red LED or the buzzer. So you have a lot of different options here and it tells you exactly what you can choose from. So you need to choose three things from this list and you need to choose two things from this list, all right? So there you go. Um, I think I'm done rambling on about this because you have an app to go make and I'm wishing you good luck and I can't wait to see what you come up with. All right, uh, see you guys next lesson.